Thank you all for coming out here to Wooroloo. I thought I might just talk very, very briefly to you and you will all have the ability to go and have a tour of the facilities that I've just had a very good tour of. I just thought I'd talk very briefly about a point of theory and a point of practice. Uh, we took government uh, nearing on two years ago <coughs> now and one thing that I've noticed since I took my commission as the Minister for Creative Services is that there are a lot of theories about criminal justice, a lot of theories about what the problems are, a lot of, a lot of theories about what the solutions might be. Um, there is no shortage of theories about criminal justice and many of you who are in this room also involved in the criminal justice industry for want of a better description you might have the same experience that I have, that I'm constantly approached by people who begin their sentence with uh, something along these lines. What you really need to do is, uh, the one thing that you really haven't done is, and there is a view that has emerged in criminal justice that um, the problems, which we all agree are complex, are somehow soluble like an algebraic problem where you can just come up with a formula and it's something that we've missed, some sort of uh, way of slashing the Gordian knot that we've all missed. And that sentence that I hear all the time that all you really need to do is you can substitute in there just about anything. Um, from capital punishment, you need to bring that back and that'll fix everything. Uh, right down to you need to spend all the money you're spending on prisons on community-based programs and, and that'll fix everything. And of course, there are not any uh, simple solutions to a range of very deep, complicated problems that go back decades and, and in some instances, in some segments of the community, even longer than that. One observation I would make about the theory of criminal justice though is that a very unfortunate debate has emerged in the media which is along the lines of a view that punishment and rehabilitation are polar opposites, that they can, that they cannot and do not exist and that what we as policy makers face is some kind of clear uh, mutually exclusive choice between the two. You can't spend money here, you must spend it there as if that is how government works, that we look at the problem of overcrowding and decide to spend money on that and that is money that is not spent somewhere else. Uh, the truth about prisons and about criminal justice is that uh, the, punish the issues of punishment and rehabilitation are not mutually exclusive. Um, that the, you have to have a welfare approach based on rehabilitation inside the community and inside prisons. Uh, but of course prisons are invariably places of punishment because your liberty is taken from you when you are detained in circumstances where I'm sure most people would rather not be detained. So trying to have that appropriate balance and trying to have a complex solutions to very complex problems is, is obviously the role of government. Uh, what I think that we're all uh, here for today is to have a look at an institution that represents in a very real and practical way, and this is my second point about uh, practical matters rather than theory, that there is a diversity of approach. I mean, the fact is that Waterloo is a prison. It's a very attractive prison. Uh, it's a beautifully uh, appointed and surrounded prison. But the reality is that most of the <coughs> men who are here, the overwhelming majority of my closet, would rather not be here, and they would rather be somewhere else. And it is the job of the prison service and the Department of Corrective Service and all of the staff who do a wonderful job here to ensure that everyone who does, unfortunately, end up in this institution has the best possible prospects of not coming back here again. And what you have in this particular institution is a 95% employment rate among the, the men who are uh, forced to spend time here. Uh, you'll go up and have a look at the capacity increase that, that is now coming online. Uh, there's 11 self-care beds, 63 semi-self-care beds and 36 uh, double bunks. Uh, the trades here, uh, the skills trades, uh, the cabinet making, you'll see that most of the, the uh, inside of the cells have been produced by the prisoners themselves. Uh, the brick lane, uh, all of the landscaping that's gone on, an enormous amount of the work has actually occurred using the skills that have been developed inside this prison. So you've got an institution here which I think in 1915 was a tuberculosis sanitarium in which the Department of Corrective Services took over in 1970. And looking around the grounds, uh, I wonder to myself what might have happened to all these beautiful heritage buildings had the great Department of Corrective Services not took them over in 1970. Because one of the things that the Department of Corrective Services does do very well is maintain its facilities. And so you've had a, a heritage restoration of a whole range of uh, facilities here. But what you've got inside this prison is that mix of punishment and rehabilitation. Uh, 
one, more of one doesn't always mean less of the other. And that is, I think, part of the debate that needs to, to grow and to be better understood in the media and, and the general public. I get sent to me with some annoying regularity uh, email with respect to some or other sheriff in Texas or Houston or somewhere in, who has people at the side of the road in pink boxer shorts. And um, they're very annoying emails because I have to believe that. But, uh, they demonstrate, I think, a lack of understanding about what is useful and what is not useful inside the prison environment. But I think you'll get the opportunity to go and have a look around today at, at a very useful, productive uh, part of our prison system. Uh, I won't keep you much longer than that. There are some thank yous that I would also um, like to provide at you all, which appear in my official speech, which is always drafted and which I always beautifully ignore, so my apologies to the Department of Correctional Services. But the following people and organisations and staff have contributed to the great work that you will see when you go on a tour this morning. The Heritage Council of Western Australia. This is, of course, a heritage listed site, and as I remarked to the builders and architects and the management of the prison, it's one thing to renovate a prison, it's another thing to renovate a heritage prison. So I understand there have been some unique challenges. The Community Reference Group for their involvement, um, which goes right back to when this project began in 2007. Cox, Hallett and Bailey, Woodland Architects and Designers, and they have representatives in the room today. SM Building, who have been responsible for building construction. Uh, building Management and Works, of course, the Commissioner Ian Johnson uh, from the Department of Corrective Services, as well as to all of the management and staff of this prison who have demonstrated patience and diligence during the disruptions caused by the construction. It is one thing to go through construction in uh, normal government services, but constructing inside a prison again produces all sorts of challenges related to uh, security and other matters. So uh, it's been a wonderful job done. I hope that you will enjoy a short tour of the facilities and see what prisons should always look like, uh, what is absolute best practice, and how it is that we need to find a balance between the punitive aspect of prisons and the welfare and rehabilitative aspect. There is an assumption that simply because a government is a tough on crime government, that there isn't a rehabilitative um, function that goes on. Nothing could really be further from the truth. Uh, offender programs have increased 45% in our first year, 60% scheduled this year. All of the things that people don't necessarily associate with the tough on crime agenda are also happening quietly behind the scenes. Please enjoy your tour and thank you all very much for coming on this morning.